This is you, spotless, without blemish, pure, healed by God. But what happens when you allow the evil to enter into your life? Addictions, resentments, toxic people, bitterness. Do you see it? You begin to stain yourself if you don't become filled by God. The presence of the Lord will allow for you to be cleansed again. Remain this way. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. It's a good day to be in God's house. Actually, why don't you stand up to your feet one more time and let's just pray. God, we thank you for your presence today. We thank you for your Holy Ghost in this place. Like the song that we were singing a minute ago, Holy Spirit, come and rest upon us. Come and move among us, Holy Spirit, for we long for your touch today. We need you, Holy Spirit. Fill us with more and more and more of you today, God. That every word that come out of my mouth be your word into our lives, Father God. That you would speak to us, Lord, and change us from the inside out, God. We welcome your presence. We long for your touch. In the mighty, holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap, praise church. You may be seated. It is a good day to be in the house of God. We start our newest series called Blank. Tell your neighbor Blank. Tell them one more time, Blank. And you might be wondering what in the world is Blank all about. Have you ever felt blank? Have you ever felt like blank? Well, you might, and let, me, let, me, let me change the words. Have you ever felt empty on the inside? Have you ever felt empty in your spirit? Have you ever felt empty in your heart? Have you ever felt like there's nothing that you can do to change the circumstances of your emotions, the circumstances of your heart? Have you ever felt like that? Many, many years ago when I was a youth pastor um, at my previous church, one of the things that um, caught my attention during that time of being a pastor was that many kids suffered with feeling empty on the inside. Now, years later, it's not only kids, but adults suffer with being empty on the inside. But one of the things that caught my attention of the way that young people demonstrated the way that they felt empty on the inside was many times cutting themselves to feel alive on the outside have you ever felt so empty on the inside that you have done things on the outside to still feel alive many times we fill our lives with things that are temporary and momentarily to be able to satisfy what only God can satisfy through his Holy Spirit and in the next few weeks we're going to be talking about being blank we're going to be talking about being empty of all that we are and being filled with all that he is. See, the Bible says that God has called us to be filled with his holy presence. And the Bible tells us that we are to seek the things of the spirit. And if that was the truth in our lives, then we would not longer be slaves of the, the patterns of this world. But we will be obedient to the spirit of God. But how many of you have a car? Raise your hand. You have a car. You have some type of vehicle. Right? If you don't have a car, how many have a bicycle? Raise your hand, you have a bicycle. Okay. I ask myself this question. My wife's car is now needs an oil change, right? I don't know how to oil change a car, right? Probably I could. I could Google it, right, or YouTube it. It might be easy just removing, you know, the old oil, putting in new oil, changing the oil filter. It might be super easy, right? I've just never done it because it's easier for me to just go somewhere, have them do it, and I just drive away with it. But how many of you change your oil by yourself? Raise your hand. Jose, put your hand down. You do not change no oil. Anybody else change their oil by themselves? Okay, a couple of you. Thank you very much for your honesty. But how many of you take it somewhere? Raise your hand. You go somewhere. You just you prefer not to hassle with that, not get dirty, right? I'm that type of person. I prefer just going somewhere, having somebody do it for me. There's nothing wrong if you do it or if you take it somewhere else, right? 
But I ask myself, why is it that our cars need an oil change? Come on now, we're in the 21st century. Like, it should be that the cars run forever without an oil change. I had a car once that um, it, it would only need an oil change every 12,000 miles, right? So I only had to go to the dealer once a year if I drove 12,000 miles a year to get an oil change. Now, my other car, right, needs an oil change of like every, I don't know, three or four months. I don't know why. Probably the type of mortar uh, engine that it has and the type of oil that they put into it, etc. So you have a synthetic oil, then you have uh, other types of oil. But why am I sharing this? So why does your car need an oil change? Well, your car needs an oil change in order to perform correctly. Because if you do not change the oil, your engine will eventually die out. The more it runs on the same oil, the more sluggish it becomes, the more particles it gets stuck in there. So your engine, instead of performing at, at its peak performance, is now struggling to perform. The, thing, the, the interesting thing is that the same thing happens with our spiritual walk. If you are not constantly changing the oil in your life, talking about your relationship with God, being strengthened and seeking the things of the spirit, your spiritual engine is struggling. Before, when you used to believe God and trust God with everything, now you struggle to even trust him with the small things. Because the oil in you is old. The oil in you stinks. And now your engine is full of things, spots, and corrosion that only the presence of God can renew. Only the presence of God can transform. But let's be honest. Knowing that we have that indicator check engine or low oil or maintenance soon, we, soon, we decide to ignore it. And take it upon, oh, I could go another 500 miles. Oh, I could go, you know, I, Damaris is, I don't know if she still does this, but when we were growing up, when we were younger, uh, I've known Damaris practically my whole entire life, right? Um, she would drive on empty forever. I don't know how her car lasted so long, but she will be on empty and she'll still drive like another 100 miles. How it happened, I don't know. Probably she prayed, laid hands. I don't know how it happened. But what happens when you, your indicator turns on in your car is basically your car telling you, hey, I'm warning you that something bad can happen unless you take action. How many of you know that the Spirit of God prompts our heart continuously, showing us that we need more of God? Am I the only one here? The Spirit of God will show you like an indicator like, hey, I need you to come to my presence. Hey, you need word in your life. Jesus, the Bible says, was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness. And it was in the wilderness while he was 40 days and 40 nights fasting that the devil came to tempt him when the devil comes to tempt you he comes to tempt you when you are most weak he doesn't tempt you when you are strong because he has no chances right he tempts you when there is some type of weakness in your life that weakness could be an uh, area that you are failing at continuously. It could be uh, something um, emotional. It could be something sexual in nature. It could be a sin. It could be so many things, an addiction. It could be a million things. While you are weak in that area, the enemy comes and he disguises himself in many forms and in many shapes to cause you to fail. So what did he do? He comes to Jesus when Jesus is physically weak. And the first thing he tells him is, if you are the son of God, turn these rocks into bread. He attacked him where he was weak. 
He was not weak in his spirit, but he was weak in his body. And he attacked him, interestingly, first in his identity. If you go a couple scriptures before... Jesus was just at the Jordan River, and he's being baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. And the Bible says that when he is submerged into the waters, and he's coming back up, what did the Bible says? The, op the heavens opened up, and a voice came out and says, this is my beloved son. So what is the first thing the enemy attacks? Is his identity. We're living in times where our identity is attacked on a daily. You can't even watch TV anymore. You can't even watch cartoons anymore because identity is being attacked via cartoons. It's sad. Can't do anything. You can't listen to music anymore because if you're not careful, the music always attacks your identity. And if you're not strong in the spirit, your identity is the first thing the enemy tries to rob from you. Because if he has your identity, he has the rest of your life. So what does he do? He attacks him in his weakest point, which is hunger. And he says, if you are truly the son of God, tell these stones to turn into bread. But you see, this is where the spirit comes into place. Tell your neighbor, you need to be filled of the spirit. He turns and he tells them, Scripture also says that men shall not live of bread alone, but of every word of God. He's basically saying, I don't need to prove to you I am the Son of God because I heard his voice. His word says I am the Son of God. I don't need to turn these bread, these stones into bread because my body does not survive on bread alone. My body survives on the word of God. See, what are we filling ourselves with, church? Tell your neighbor, what are you filling yourself with? We are constantly filling ourselves with something. You either eat right and have good performance or eat bad and have horrible performance. Same thing as your spiritual walk with Christ. Many of us are after the sweets. How many sweet people here? How many love sweets? Anybody here? Sweet too? You know, I love creating sweets, but I'm not a big sweet person. Like sometimes I'll have a craving for an ice cream or craving for a chocolate cake or something like that. But I'm not the type of person that I have to eat a dessert every time I have a meal. There's people that they must have, like for example, you must have a dessert. And then there's people that must have during their table, they must have rice. How many people must have rice? Like you have to eat rice like I don't need to have rice I could be without rice but that's okay if that's you but many of us are these sweet type of Christians we want the miracles we want the icing on the cake we want the sweet stuff we want to just enter the presence of God and be transformed but we don't want the meat we don't want the main plate we don't want God to fill us of his presence to start changing us and start transforming us. So what do we do? Because we, are, we need it, we fill ourselves with the temporary things of this world. And our engine is running not at its capacity, but under capacity, under performing, because it's being filled with the wrong things. Today you need to check yourself. You need to check your spirit. What type of oil is your engine running on? And we need to ask the Holy Spirit of God, come, Holy Spirit. We need to make it a priority in our lives to seek the presence of God. Not the last resort, but the priority. The first thing that we seek, not only when we are in trouble, but also when everything seems to be going well. In our lives, we need to seek the presence of God. <clears throat> in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 15, we find this verse that the Apostle Paul says, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery, tell your neighbor slavery, to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. I want to focus on this verse for just a couple of minutes. You see, many of us struggle with the fact that God is our Father. 
We struggle with the fact that we can cry out to God and know that he is available to us at all times. So instead of crying out to God, we cry out to other things because we think that it's easier to do so. So what happens is the scripture is saying you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. To fall back into the mindset that you are no longer sons and daughters of God. Because the Bible says that when we sin, we're covered, we're forgiven. That if you have accepted Christ, your forgiveness of sin is not just when you, for, when you sinned before giving your life to Jesus Christ. But you're forgiven today with knowing Jesus Christ. But we live in this constant battle of confusion, this constant battle of condemnation. If you read a couple verses before. Before that, it says, therefore, now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So the Apostle Paul is trying to tell us, hey, you know, you cannot live with the mindset that you are condemned always because of the things and the decisions that you make in life. The first thing you need to start changing in your thinking pattern is the fact that you are no longer a slave, but now you are a son. If you are a son... You start acting like a son. I'm not going to get so deep into this scripture, but if you read the whole chapter 8, you'll see that he starts talking about that now you have a spirit of sonship in which you could cry out, Abba, Father. Now, let's be real. How many of you don't cry out first to God and you cry out to other things? Be real. Shame the devil. One person is real in the house. Two people. Three. Anybody else? All you are saints. Praise the Lord. Everyone's going to heaven. Let's be real. We don't call out to God first. We don't cry out to him as our father. We cry out to probably our physical father, our physical mother, our friends, our family, ourselves. Because we can do all things by ourselves. And so what do we do? We fill ourselves with the flesh versus the spirit of God. And what happens when we fill ourselves with the flesh, we fall into fear, condemnation, guilt, error, necessities, lack, versus crying out to the Father. That's why he says, seek the things of the Spirit. Because if you seek the things of the Spirit, then you will have the mind of the Spirit. But if you seek the things of the flesh, then you would have the mind of the flesh. And what does the flesh want? The things of the flesh always end up in death. For the pay of sin is death. But the free gift of Christ is salvation. Now, behind me, there's this uh, motion of a cup, and uh, you notice that it turns black, and then as water starts coming in, it starts clearing out. Think of your life the same way. Not only when you come to Christ, because the Bible says that you're made a new creation in Christ, meaning that that water that is coming in, that pouring out of water, and that you know, pouring out and the pouring in is your sins, yourself, your selfish nature, your old nature just coming out, and then the new nature of God coming in. You're made a new creation in Christ. You're made new, transparent, joyful, full of joy, full of peace, full of love. That is the power of the Holy Spirit working in you. But if we're not careful, we return to that black cup knowing Jesus because we're being filled constantly daily every word that you listen to is coming into your cup and if you're not careful words of discord could go into your spirit so deep into your spirit and cause roots of bitterness roots that God never intended for you to have because now you are a new creation in Christ that's why the Bible says that you must put on the full armor of God. So church, where do we stand today? You don't have to respond to me, but answer yourself this question. Is your cup full of him or is your cup full of you? Because it can be in both. 
Jesus used the example of money. He says you cannot serve both masters. You can't, because you love one more than the other. You can't serve money and God. But I want to take money out of the equation right now. I want to put, you can't serve both masters. You can't serve you and God. Because you love one more than the other. That's why he said, if you want to follow me, you must first deny yourself. And that denial is when you say, God, I am so impure, I'm so frail, I, I'm, I'm so, so jacked up, screwed up, messed up in so possible ways. But please, empty me of me and fill me with you. When was the last time you cried out to God and you said, God, I don't want me anymore. I want you. I don't want my miracles anymore. I want you. I don't want to see a change in this world. I just want you. Because we get so asphyxiated with our miracle. We get so asphyxiated with our prayer request that we forget that it is not our prayer request that we need. We need the one who could answer our prayers. We need the one who could change the world. We need the one who has called us out of darkness into light. But we get so stuck on those things. If your life could just show us a screen right now, right behind me, what would we see? What would my life show? I read a, I read a, a, a like an analogy or, or a, you know, like a story of a, a refiner and a brick of gold. And, and I've shared this before of the how gold is refined in the fire, right? And, and the, the gold speaks to his refiner. He says, but you're so harsh on me. You, you're, you're so mean to me. And, and the refiner says, but why? Why do you say I'm mean to you? Because you, you put me in the fire. You, you don't love me. Because if you love me, you wouldn't put me in the fire. If you love me, you will give me what, what makes me look beautiful. You will put me on display. And the refiner says, that's where you're wrong. Because I love you, I put you in the fire. Because I love you, I put you in the flames. Because in order for me to put you on display, I first must remove everything of you so that you could truly reflect who you are and it's all of me. So the, 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 the goal turns to the... To, to the refiner and he's like but when is it going to end when I can see me in you and that cup is you that cup is me when we come to Christ he empties us out and makes us new and if we're not careful little by little little things just start popping in I was cutting my grass the other day I told you guys remember well, I never finished the hedges, but <laughs> that's a different story. But as, as, as I was cutting the grass, I noticed, where do, where do all these little weeds come from? I mean, I don't, I don't go out there and throw seeds. But it's, it's the birds. The birds are flying, and little things, particles start falling. And that's why all these little weird trees. and The birds over your life. You have to be careful. Because... It might sound good, it might sound holy, it might even seem godly, but it's not of God. And so we fill ourselves with these things. When I was younger, I, I, I always said, you know, because so-and-so in church did it, it was okay. Well, years later when I was an adult, I realized that it doesn't matter if so-and-so does it at church. If it's not godly, if it's not written in the Bible, then it's not okay. So I don't care even if the pastor does it. Because that he could go to hell. You know, I'm not going to follow him. I'm going to follow Jesus. That's why the Apostle Paul said, hey, you know what? Fix your eyes on Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Not on men. So when he's saying, you did not receive a spirit of fear. Or, or I'm sorry, of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Would you stand with me to your feet today? I don't know if you have your dad here today. I don't even know if, you, if your dad is around anymore. But I want you to just not think of your physical father for right now. 
Think about your spiritual life. When, when my daughter falls, the first thing she cries for is me or her mom. She cries for one of us to come and pick her up. When my son gets hurt, the same thing. They recognize that there's one that they could cry out to. What the scripture reminds us is that you have one that you could cry out to. You have one that you could cry out to and say, rescue me. I need more of you for my life is empty. This engine of mine is about to break down. The engine, check engine light has been blinking for too long. The empty light has been blinking for too long. And God is saying, son and daughter, I am here to rescue you. I'm here to fill you of my presence. But as he fills you with his presence, there will be a thing that will happen. And it's called transformation. It's called his sanctification. And he will start to take away all those ugly, dirty particles out of your life. He will start refreshing your spirit. He will start transforming your life. But only if you allow him to so let me ask you church don't no need to raise your hand how many of you want more of him you need him everyone here has a need i get it i have needs as well we have financial needs emotional physical but the biggest need that we all have in common is that we need more of God. We need Him. And if we have Him, we have the rest. Jesus put it in these terms. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all else will be added to you. Today, just close your eyes and just lift up your hands. I'm going to ask the band to come up. We're going to re-sing that song about the Holy Spirit. But just with your eyes closed and, and hands high to heaven, just ask the Lord, God, I need you. I want more of you. I don't want more of myself. I don't want more of the things of this world. God, I want more of you. Lord, forgive me for being so affixed on my miracle and so fixated on my prayer requests that I, I have forgotten to seek you for who you are. Lord, this engine of mine is about to break down and I need an oil change. I need fresh anointing. Holy Spirit, come rest on us today. Come rest on us today, Holy Spirit. As we sing this song today, don't sing it as a song. Make it a prayer today. Make it a, a, a prayer to heaven saying, come rest on me, Holy Spirit. I need your peace. I need you. Because I've tried every other avenue and it has failed me. But you will not fail me. I need your comfort today, God. I need your reassurance. Oh, Abba, we cry out to you, Abba. Cry out to your Father this morning, church. He is listening to you. He's with his hands extended towards you. His love is available to you. His grace is available to you. All that he is is available to you. Heaven is waiting for you to just cry out to him. We cry out to you, Abba. We need more of you today. Lord, empty us of ourselves. Empty us of the filth that we have filled ourselves with. Deal with us, God, and just fill us with more and more and more. You know what the first thing that you need to do in order to have a change in your life is recognize that you need a change. <laughs> they say that the insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. A lot of us are insane. <laughs> Because we, we do the same thing over and over and over, saying, oh, no, now it's going to be different. Today is going to be different. Tomorrow, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to continue. No, it's good. Persistence is good. But allow God to bring change. Allow God to work in you today. Surrender to Jesus. Let's worship the Lord. Hands have lifted to heaven. As we ask the Lord to fill us 
with his presence.